Today is Monday, April 12th, and it is 12.21 p.m., and we're here at Geneva United Methodist Church. My name is Brennan Hamilton, and I will be interviewing Hofmeister. Thank you so much for interviewing with us today. So please state your name, your role as a student or teacher at the consolidated school that you went to, and then what years you attended school. My name is Dennis Hofmeister. Um, I started school actually in 1950, right here in Geneva, Iowa. The thing I remember most about kindergarten, number one is phonics. We did phonics every day. In fact, we did them more than kindergarten. We did them in first and second grade. Of course, in kindergarten, we had a cot and we had nap time, but we really spent a lot of time on learning how to pronounce various syllables and uh, the consonants and the vowels. We learned how to talk, and then we learned how to write. Uh, that was communications. And so I attended the school here in Geneva through third grade. And at that time, there must have been a, a consolidation gone on in the school systems because I never moved. I stayed living in the same spot, but I went from Geneva School to Ackley School. Mm -hmm. So I attended Ackley until 1961 when it became Ackley Geneva. And I still attended after that my junior and senior year, but I graduated from Ackley Geneva after going to Geneva and Ackley. When were you born? 1945. Where did you grow up? Rural Ackley Geneva on the farm my entire life. In fact, I live just one mile now from where I spent my first 18 years. So what was your family like? I had two brothers. We were farmers. Back in those days, we farmed 160 acres to start with, which was an average size farm. We had dairy cows, we had beef cows, we farrowed pigs, we had chickens, we had sheep, we raised uh, alfalfa hay, we raised oats, we raised corn. How far away did you live from your school? Well, Geneva would be five miles uh, when I was attending Geneva. And then when I went to Ackley, it was seven miles. So what were some of your interests as a child? Horses. I always wanted a horse. And finally, I think when I was 10 or 11 years old, my dad got me a horse. Hunting, I got my first shotgun when I was 10 years old. And I got a rifle when I was 12 years old. And we uh, didn't have any TV. We didn't have any indoor plumbing. So everything we did pretty much was outdoors. I mean, we had a radio, but I can remember making, uh, not when I was 10 years old, but maybe younger, making mud pies. And uh, the local elevator manager one day saw the fact that I was making mud, mud pies, and he thought that that would be uh, good if I brought him a mud pie. So he wrapped one up, and I gave it to him for Christmas. Mom's chickens, she had about 250 chickens. They used to roam the whole barnyard. <clears throat> and they would get up in the hay shed and lay eggs up there. And mom didn't get up there to get them. But as kids, we would find them up there. And so we played uh, war in the grove. And we used the rotten eggs as uh, hand grenades. We rode a lot of bicycle. I used to trap pocket gophers. And for every pocket gopher that I trapped, uh, if I took it to the courthouse, I'd get 10 cents. And uh, I maybe had a dollar. I rode five miles on my bicycle to the store here in Geneva and I could buy a comic book for 10 cents. I used to buy a lot of comic books. Hunting, horseback riding, bicycle riding, and then, of course, we played Little League Baseball and Babe Ruth Baseball. When we were in school, every recess we played baseball. I didn't have a brother that I could play with at the time, so I played ball by myself by throwing the ball up on the roof of the barn and catching it. We were good baseball players and we played every day. How old were your brothers compared to you? One was four years younger and one was 11 years younger. Okay. And what were their names? Douglas and Dallas. So when you were a kid, did you like school? Why or why not? Yeah, I didn't have any choice. I mean, that was the way things were. We went to school. I guess I'd have to say school was tougher maybe in a sense. I think we did a lot of things in school that maybe they don't do nowadays as far as learning things. And we still participated in baseball, and football, and track, and FFA, and vocational agriculture, and we were in 4-H and we had 4-H projects. One of the things that my dad taught me was keeping records. Way back in 1955, my dad was doing a budget. He was doing a profit and loss statement. At 10 years of age, I got my first dairy calf. And I had to keep records of how much feed that calf ate every day and what it cost. And it was a year and a half later before she had a calf and started returning me income. And it took me a couple of years to pay off the debt before I had any 
a prophet. So that was a learning experience. So what did you want to be when you grew up? A veterinarian. And I went to veterinary school at Iowa State. I went two years, well, a short two years. I didn't finish the last quarter. And my next door neighbor lost his life in a corn picker accident. And he had just built a new dairy barn, state of the art, and he was uh, in the dairy business. And so his widow asked me if I was interested. And so I, well, my, my advisor at Iowa State said that there was 400 of us in the pre-vet class and only 75 were gonna make it. And unless you had a high B average, you probably weren't gonna make it. Well, I had a middle B or a lower B. So I decided to go into the dairy business and farming. So you mentioned your move between going to Geneva and then Ackley and then um Ackley Geneva. Mm -hmm. So what was that like? I don't remember anything bad about it. I mean, well, I'll tell you what, one of the things that was good about it, when I was in third grade in Geneva, my teacher was Miss Cummings. When I was in fourth grade in Ackley, my teacher was Mrs. During. Mm -hmm. Same person. She got married in the summer mm -hmm. and went to teach in Ackley. So I had the same teacher both places. Yeah, there was new kids to get to know. The classes were bigger, but it was okay. So would you say it's pretty same for like school-wise and stuff like that across each school, like lessons and all that? Not really. What did a typical morning before school look like for you? Well, we got up at five o'clock every year because dad milked cows. And uh, as a youngster, I thought that was great. So I would get up even though maybe I wasn't supposed to and go get dressed and go out outside but I loved it out there I loved the outdoors and the animals and so on we had to ride the school bus most of those years the only time I got to drive to school is when I got to high school and uh, went out for sports you know the buses were pretty much full if you weren't out for sports you rode the bus and I don't think any high school kids ride the bus today um, what were some of your at-home expectations well I'll tell you one example that my dad told me he says you know if you're gonna go out for football and he didn't let me go out till I was a sophomore and only then because uh, a neighbor gave me a ride home because I didn't have a license then yet and he said when you get home you've milked the cows I started milking when I was like nine or ten years old and we milked by hand for a couple of years until we got a milking machine so I was expected to do the chores after football practice and after baseball practice and he said on Friday night if the football game is at home. You will get right home after school, milk the cows, and then you can go play football. So what would you typically wear to school? Did you have a uniform or a dress code? Blue jeans and a, a shirt. We had to wear a belt, didn't go without a belt, but the dress code was not very stringent. So thinking back to the actual school that you went to, mm -hmm. um, can you describe what it looked like on the outside and the inside? Well, all the schools that I went to were brick mm -hmm. on the outside. The school in Ackley, when I was in middle school, it was brand new, mm -hmm. and it was a uh, school just for middle school. The grade school and high school was up at the old building. And while I was in middle school, they actually built the new high school that's there today, and that's all brick. It's one story. The whole uh, middle school and high school is one story. Previous to that, it was three stories, but brick. So it changed somewhat. The original schools, the gymnasium, really didn't have any seating, very limited. In fact, the gym, the walls were so close to the floor that there was maybe only two foot all the way around the perimeter. So you didn't want to go out of bounds with too much speed or you'd hit the wall. The gymnasiums nowadays are a lot different than that. The bleachers fold up, there's a lot of space, and uh, evidently back then basketball wasn't a priority. Now my mother, who went to Geneva here, played, went 12 years, to school, graduated as a senior, and she played high school basketball, which I think was kind of unusual back in the time. Um, were there any other defining features that your school had? I know that you mentioned that you personally um, didn't have indoor plumbing. Did your school, or did you use like an outhouse? Did you use a well, any of that stuff? My wife, Georgia, went to country school through seventh grade, 1957. She went to Sunnyside School, which is on the map. They had outdoor plumbing. They had an outhouse. The Geneva school here did not. It had indoor plumbing. I can't tell you right offhand when that school was built. We had outdoor plumbing at home until maybe I was 11, 12 years old. What technology, if any, did your school have access to? Like radios, um, record players, any of that? We did get a TV, I think, when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. 
at the school. Other than that, I don't remember much for a radio or anything like that. We had photo club. I mean, they used to take a lot of pictures. Not much uh, for communications. How many students were in your graduating class? 55. How do you remember your classmates? There was a few more girls than there was boys. Most of the boys were in sports, played football and baseball, and basketball. A lot of them were rural students. Not too many students came from the town. A lot of us were in Bulk Ag and FFA. Probably a lot of us were in 4-H also. In fact, we had a 4-H softball tournament in the county. We had basketball tournaments. We had uh, the fair, took our livestock and showed it. One year, probably when I was a senior, at the Franklin County Fair, we had 425 dairy animals. There was 125 Holstein calves in the calf class. We had 300 beef animals. And to, now there's more beef animals at the fair today than, than there is dairy by far, but um, still not the numbers. Of course, back in those days, the numbers of farm kids that were in 4-H and came to the fair was a lot more than what it is today, too. Then how do you think your classmates remember you? I don't know. I guess okay. We all got along together. We all worked together. We all played together. I don't think there was any bullies in the class. Although bullying might have been more prevalent back in those days than it is today, but maybe they didn't look at it so much as bullying. I don't know. If uh, you weren't getting along with somebody or you were being bullied, um, I guess you were on your own, you know, and uh, sometimes you resolved it out behind the schoolhouse. Did you ever do that? Oh, yeah. Did you win? Yeah. Well, when you're a freshman, you get initiated. Well, when I got initiated, I had to wear a skirt and a t-shirt. I had to have a uh, piece of twine string around my neck with the head of a rooster. You had to kill a rooster, put the twine string through his head, and wear it around your neck all day long. And uh, the seniors, of course, initiated the freshmen, so they would ask you to do push-ups and various things. And then at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, you went out to the football field, and you got initiated. And you went through what you might call an obstacle course. And it wasn't as bad as they had made it out to be, but I suspect you could be scared by it. What was all an obstacle course? Oh, I could hear they had a bunch of bales of straw out there, and I could hear this guy swinging a bullwhip and snapping it. You had to crawl through the bales, and I, I guess that's really the only obstacle I really remember. He probably had to run and do push-ups and various things, you know. The seniors and the upperclassmen were dominant. So if there was any bullying, it was done by the upperclassmen letting you know that they were the leaders, the dictator in charge, you know. I guess that's where, when I got to be a, a sophomore or a junior, some of those upperclassmen uh, paid the price. Um, did girls get initiated as well? Or oh, yeah. Just, uh, oh. oh, yeah. How did Every... the girls initiate different from the boys? <laughs> they had to dress up. I think they dressed up in slacks, and I don't remember, but they had to wear the chicken head. On. And I expect the, the upper class girls made them do things, too. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But people didn't think that much about it, or, you mm -hmm. know, that's just the way it was. Expectations, I guess. I don't know. When you actually arrived to the school, how did your school day begin? Oh, I'm trying to think. Uh, was it 8 o'clock, maybe? First mm -hmm. class? No, it might have been 9 o'clock. I think those were our classes, maybe mm -hmm. three classes in the morning. I think it was 9 o'clock. And then you got an hour off for lunch, mostly hour classes in the afternoon, till 4 o'clock. So you had maybe 3 in the morning, 3 in the afternoon, and then the football practice began. Now, football practice, that was a, a whole different uh, practice than it is today. For example, in the summer, in August, we had two-day practices. Practice in the morning, practice in the afternoon. Most of those practices were two to two and a half hours. The rule was no water during practice. And of course, you're in August, and some days it was uh, pretty hot out there. Mm -hmm. And why we were not allowed to drink water, I'm not really sure. There really weren't any breaks. I mean, we went 45 minutes, maybe a calisthenics and then we did wind sprints for maybe 45 minutes and then we did blocking and tackling practice and then we scrimmaged and you were on the move now i learned the hard way my sophomore year that you better be in shape when yeah. football practice starts and you better have your shoes broken in because uh, they're no mercy and of course 
My father had no sympathy either. He didn't think I needed to be playing football. I should be home milking cows and helping him. So you're on your own. You know, you want to do this, you're going to have to pay the price. Well, before school started, did you have any before school activities? Did your school offer breakfast, anything like that? Yeah, in the wintertime, we had intramurals. A lot of times, I guess, those started in the morning, maybe at 8 o'clock or thereabouts. There were certain FFA and bouquet activities. I mean, if you were in the shop, if you were building something in the shop, you could go in there at eight o'clock or after school and work on it. So what sort of classes did you take? Well, you were required to take English all four years. Speech was required. I think we took that as seniors. Of course, going into veterinary medicine, we took algebra one, algebra two, we took geometry, we took solid geometry, we took trigonometry, we took calculus, we took chemistry. I don't remember we took it all four years. We took physics, we took business law, we took civics, U.S. history, American history, typing, vocag. I didn't take home ec. Um, did you have any favorite or least favorite classes? Did I say calculus? Did you mention calculus? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't care for that one so much, I guess. That was when we were seniors. And we had a college prep math course, too. I guess physics and chemistry were my favorite classes and vocag. I did really well in speech. I can't say English was, but I'll tell you what. It was a good thing that we had what we had because when we went to Iowa State, English 101, 102, and 103 was all essay, 500 word essays. And we wrote out of class and in class essays, 500 word, if there were five errors in spelling, punctuation, structure, grammar, any error, if there were five of them, you flunked. A lot of kids flunked freshman English. So what did you do in vocational ag? I guess we had, you know, the livestock projects, but a lot of the vocational ag was in classroom teaching. We went into the shop, and of course, the, there was a shop class also, industrial mm -hmm. arts class. They used the shop. Now, back when, when I was there, they didn't teach us welding mm -hmm. uh, like they did later on. Kids built individual hog houses, small hog houses, or chicken houses, or uh, rabbit cages, or all kinds of stuff, I guess, whatever you wanted to build. Now, the industrial arts did more of the furniture building and mm -hmm. that type of thing. We probably worked on, well, we really didn't bring any tractors in there. We didn't paint any tractors. We didn't overhaul any tractors like they did later years. So <clears throat> it was more maybe classroom studying about agriculture. So did you take shop as well? No. My grandfather was a carpenter. My dad was a carpenter. So I started carpentry when I was eight years old. And what I did, I wanted a farm set. I wanted a barn and a corn crib and a machine shed. And my dad had a shop and a table saw and a drill press and some hand tools, so he helped me build a farmstead. I guess I learned more about the uh, construction and building from him, and he only went through eighth grade, and he had to take the eighth grade test. Well, did you have any exams, or I know you mentioned that you have writing assignments in college. Did you have similar writing assignments when you were in high school? Yes, we wrote a lot of papers in English class, mostly in English class, and of course, in speech class, I don't know if you'd say that we wrote speeches. Some people wrote speeches. I don't like written speeches. I don't like to stand there with a paper and read what I want to say. I just have a note card with the topics on it, and hopefully I know enough about the topics that I can talk about it without reading it. And I don't like to stand behind a podium. I would rather move around in amongst the audience. And you can't always do that, but sometimes you can. I like to start out the presentation with a joke or something to get the audience on my side so that they become comfortable maybe with me and me with them and we don't have all this anxiety because mm -hmm. sometimes it can be that way and that's not good. Well, what kind of school supplies did you use at school? A slide rule. I don't know what else we needed besides the books. So did you have any music education or music classes in your school? Oh yeah. We did. I started playing the trombone when I was in fourth grade, and I played it all the way through high school. I played in the uh, pep band, the dance band, the marching band, and the concert band. I was not very talented when it came to music and the trombone. I had to practice a lot. I had to have the music in front of me. There were kids in the band that could pick up their instrument and just play anything by ear. Well, that wasn't me. Now, I was good at marching. I was a band captain, the rank captain, and we 
played uh, John Philip Sousa. Stars and Stripes was my favorite by far. Did you ever do choir at all or? No. Um, did your school offer PE or physical education? Oh yeah, all four years. Every day I think we had PE. Did you like it? Sure, it was pretty tough. <clears throat> I think it was called Irish basketball we played. And uh, when you play Irish basketball, you have a boxing glove on one hand and the other hand you use to dribble and shoot. So if somebody gets in your way, guess what? Hit them. And then we played another game called War. And there was another game we played where you were on your back, or on your rear. I mean, you, you had your feet, you had put your arms behind your back, and you kind of sat up. But that's how you moved around the floor, kind of like soccer. You had to get the ball in this hoop, you know. And so when you got two teams out there, maybe 10 on a team, and the ball's on the floor and everybody's on their rear, a lot of people got kicked because you're using your feet to kick the ball, you know. And, of course, we played basketball, too, regular basketball. Did you have any specific gym uniforms or what were you expected to wear? Just t-shirt and shorts, tennis shoes. Was PE separated, like boys and girls? Or? Oh yeah, you couldn't put girls in those classes. So did you ever use the presidential fitness test during PE? Yes, we did. Because I remember one of the kids in my class set ups. He, did, he must have did a thousand of them. I mean, he did them the whole PE class, and then when class was over, he was still doing them. And we did all those things. When did you start doing the presidential fitness? Probably when I was a freshman. Did you have to run the mile? Probably. I don't remember that so much, but uh, I did go out for track one year, throw the shot put. But we could run 10 miles. You know why? Because after going through football practice two and a half hours without a rest or water, you could do a lot. In fact, our two coaches were ex-Marines. And one of the kids that graduated ahead of me, when he went to the Marine Corps after high school, he said that the Marine Corps was easier than high school football. We won 13 football games in a row, and we would beat people 30 to nothing, 50 to nothing, and so on. And in the second half, we were usually ahead, but in the second half, we had the other team totally wore out because they weren't in as good a shape as we are. So did you ever go to playoffs for that, or did they have a state Didn't or anything? Didn't have playoffs, mm -hmm. no. No, they didn't, sadly enough. Wish we would have. Well, we played Hampton every year, which was a lot bigger school. We played Dow Falls and JV, but I don't think we played them in varsity. We played the University of Northern Iowa high school team. Did you know they had a high school team? No, I didn't. Yeah, you know, back in the day that I played, they did. We played in the stadium, O.R. Lathium Field. We beat U and I high. 50 to nothing. We were ahead 47 to nothing. And so our quarterback, who was my class, this was my junior year, was a four-year starter at quarterback, and he was an excellent athlete. So rather than we were down on the 20-yard line, rather than score another touchdown, the coach said, we're going to kick a field goal and make it even 50. And though the fourth quarter, none of the starters played and put all the subs in. Were you a starter? Or... Oh, yeah. What position did you play? Offensive center and de defensive guard on a 6-3 and uh Linebacker on the 5'4". I only weighed 195 pounds then. <clears throat> so, going back to school, did your school offer foreign language classes? No, not back then. Did your school offer any art classes at all? Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, we had an art department. Did you yep. take any art? No. And then, did your school offer any special education classes or gifted classes at all? No. I don't think we really had any uh, special ed students. I don't know if we about gifted. I guess, yeah, some were smarter than others, but... Uh, did your school have a guidance counselor? Yes. Did you ever have to visit them? No. Did they work more as helping students apply for colleges, or were they more seen <clears throat> as an on-site therapist? I wasn't very proud of our guidance counselor. He took home a paycheck. He oversaw a study hall. I don't remember him teaching any classes. Um, I don't remember him giving anybody any advice. He was kind of a waste of time. I don't know why they have him, but yeah. maybe the state required it. I don't know. Did your school offer driver's training? Oh, yeah. Um, when did you do it in the summer? Or was it a part of the curriculum? Oh, uh, it's part of the curriculum. What were some of the things you learned there? Nothing. Well, I started driving when I was... Uh, 11 years old. Dad had a 1953 Chevy Impella that he kept when he bought a newer car and tractors. And my cousin had a Dodge Power Wagon from the war, World War II. And by the time we were 14, 
we knew how to drive and do everything. Mm -hmm. And back in those days, the town cop neither had a squad car mm -hmm. or a uniform. The county sheriff did not have a uniform. He didn't have a squad car. He wore a six shooter and a cowboy hat. I don't know, law enforcement didn't seem to do much either. Maybe there was nothing to do, I don't know. But yeah, we all knew how to drive and knew all the rules and the laws. So before we ever took driver's training. Did your school ever teach you cursive? Oh yeah, absolutely. We learned cursive probably in third, fourth grade, fifth grade in there, something like that. In fact, the classroom up on the wall had all the ABCs and all the uh, numerals in printing and in cursive right up there on the wall. We spent a lot of time. We used to have paper with lines on it. Of course, the capital letter took up two lines and the small letters took up one line. I think that's how it was when we were learning how to write. We probably spent a lot more time cursive than printing. I don't think printing was really acceptable or the thing to do. We were probably pretty good writers, pretty legible. So what were your teachers like back in high school and middle school? My math teacher, Mrs. Kelly, was very strict. And if you were sitting in your chair with your hands in your pocket, she made you take them out. Mm -hmm. Because if you happen to fall off your chair or tip over, you won't be able to catch yourself and you get hurt. Yeah, I would say for the most part, it was pretty disciplined. So what did teachers usually wear to school? I would say most of the men wore suits and ties and the women wore nice dresses. The coaches, uh, I don't remember them necessarily wearing coats and ties or shirts and ties. Definitely the superintendent, the principal, and most of the teachers did. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that your teachers were pretty strict. What were some other rules that you had in the classroom? Oh, of course you can't chew gum. You can't talk out of turn. I mean, the dress code was fairly strict but not not all that strict. Did they have any discipline techniques for if you did break those rules? Yeah, yeah you flunk. If you're not going to do your work and behave or whatever, or just flunk you. Then you can come back next year. Yeah. And back in those days, kids did flunk yeah. and they had to come back and take the class over. I would say generally speaking, everything was a whole lot more disciplined. You were made to work and do your lesson and you got what you got. So you mentioned that you had books for class. How did you get those books? They handed them out to us mm -hmm. at the start of school or at the semester, and I don't remember them being any charge for them. Where did you typically eat lunch? We ate in the school cafeteria. There was some times when we got in junior, senior year, we would have an hour, so we would uh, go uptown maybe to grab a hamburger or whatever. You see, you could get a hamburger, french fries, and a Coke for 90 cents. And then the other 10 cents, you could stop at the bakery and get a long time. But most of the time, we ate at the cafeteria okay. at the school. Hot lunch room, they called it. Yeah. Did your school provide that hot lunch, or did you usually bring a cold lunch? When I was uh, here in Geneva, the first three or four years, mom sent a lunch bucket. And I don't remember if that's because I mean, the school had a, a lunchroom here, but it's in the new part that mm -hmm. uh, wasn't there. I remember what year that was built, the new gymnasium, but there's a cafeteria in there. But I know the first three years that I came here, four years, I had a lunch bucket. You know how I know that? I'll never forget it. One of the girls, or two of the girls that rode my bus, who were middle or high school, every morning would take my lunch bucket. Do they eat my apple and banana or my sandwich? No. They ate my brownie and my cake and every day. Yeah, I told my folks about it, but oh, you're all right, you know, as long as they didn't eat it all. Away. I remember them doing that. So I know I was carrying a lunch bucket, Roy Rogers lunch bucket. The Caro syrup pail, it was a tin pail, mm -hmm. probably held a quart, maybe it was a gallon, I don't know, but it had a lid on it. And you know, times were tough. We, we were, uh, the war and the depression and so on, people didn't have a lot of money. So they used those Caro syrup buckets for hot lunch pails. When you were at lunch, did you get to sit with whoever you wanted to, or did you have to sit in a seating chair? No, we sat wherever we wanted to. And how did you pay for lunch? 35 cents. I don't know if they paid for six weeks at a time, I think, 35 mm -hmm. cents a day. So did you have a recess? Oh yeah. Yes, we had a half hour, not in high school. I don't think we had middle school either, but in grade school. Might've been a half hour in the morning, a half hour in the afternoon, and then you had the lunch 
hour at noon, so we'd hurry up and eat, and then we could go out and play ball. So did your school provide the balls and stuff, or did you have to bring those from home? Yes and no. They did provide some, but a lot of us brought our own gloves, and sometimes mm -hmm. we brought the balls and the bats. And... Did you ever have indoor recess if the weather was poor? Or... Yeah, we did, yes. What did you typically do during that? Oh, I don't know. Played mm -hmm. basketball, maybe um, similar to PE in high school. Did you ever have any forbidden games or activities? Did the school ever ban anything from you guys playing? Not that I can think of. Did you have a school nurse? I'm going to say no. I can't remember. We might have had later on. I don't remember that we ever had one in high school, but the grade school might have had one back when I was in high school. So how did the school day end? With the buzzer ringing. Did you ever take like an ITBS, Iowa assessments, Iowa basic skills, any standardized tests? Yep, basic skills, probably every year we did those. Then you'd get scored individually and it'd tell you what your rank was compared to all the other kids in the state of Iowa. So were your scores fairly consistent? Yeah, I would say so. How did you or your family feel about taking these tests? It was just the way it was. It was part of the school procedure and the way it is that's what we got to do and did so. you ever take the sat or act mm -hmm. yeah um, did you ever take any prep classes or pretests for it i'm not sure if i did i don't remember do you know if it was difficult or was it did you think it's fairly easy what was your thought i'd say it was difficult do you remember what your score was no most of my years in college and school were in the 90 to 90 was a b back then 95 was an a 95 to 100, I think 85 was the C and 75 was the F. Most of the time I was in the 90 probably mm -hmm. percentile. Did you ever have to take a test to see what your aptitude would be or what your future job should be? Don't remember that I did. I might have, but mm -hmm. it mustn't have been any big deal. So did your school ever have any fire, tornado, or duck and cover drills at all? Yes. What were those like? Well, when the alarms went off, everybody had to evacuate the school mm -hmm. and uh, there was an orderly procedure to do that usually led by the teachers we went outside to a location until the buzzer brought us back in again did you ever have any incidents regarding safety at your school i don't think so none that i can ever remember what was it like when you consolidated in third grade and then again in high school well see in high school which would have been Going into my junior year, nothing changed for me. What happened then was it became Ackley Geneva. So this center here became a middle school, and all the high school kids came to uh, Ackley High School. So it was just a matter of bringing these Geneva High School kids into our classes. The elementary school kids here came to Ackley, and that's the way it was when I graduated. Uh, Wellsburg. Steamboat, Steamboat Rock didn't come in until later. Do you have any particular memories from those experiences? Geneva always had girls basketball, and they had some very good teams over the years. And so when Geneva high school kids came to Ackley, they wanted basketball. And I don't remember exactly when that happened, if that was immediately or if it took a while. Girls basketball came about. Did you have a parent on the school board? No. So how did um, student life change like during and then after the consolidation? I don't think any. How did the kids from Geneva interact with the kids from Ackley and vice versa? How Was there any tensions at all or did they just? No, it was, uh, it was very good. They were accepted just like any one of us. What was the typical year round school schedule like? A lot better than it is nowadays. I mean, we didn't get any afternoons like they do now, Wednesday afternoon, they don't go to class. And, you know, if uh, a cloud comes over, they call school off. We got very few days, if any, that we didn't have school. We were there every day for the full period, full time. Education was important. Describe your summer break. We had dairy cows and beef cows, so that means we baled a lot of hay. And so we baled hay with my uncle and my dad's cousin and uh, one other neighbor. So somebody was cutting hay about every day, and we were baling hay every day. Seemed like we baled hay every afternoon. Of course, in the morning we cultivated corn. And if we weren't busy, then you could hire out to some other farmer somewhere else and bail hay for him. We didn't lift weights back in school. We didn't need to because we bailed hay so much that we were pretty strong. And then we, yeah, we played papers, baseball in the summertime and uh, mm -hmm. 
rode the horse and um, yeah would you say that's pretty typical though for the kids um in your community to be baling hay working on the farms that sort of stuff yeah did you have any other breaks during the school year besides summer break christmas easter thanksgiving did your school ever have any class parties not that i can remember we had prom we used to have some dances once in a while did you have homecoming as well oh yeah that was a big deal it really was well uh, not only a big deal for the high school kids a big deal for the alumni because mm -hmm. the alumni had a homecoming dance every year too and a uh, big football game back in those days we used to i i don't know how many people there might have been three thousand people at a football game the bleachers were full on both sides the sidelines were full and that varied a little bit from game to game but friday night football was a big deal everybody went for homecoming what did people typically wear well it was formal suits and ties and same with prom then mm -hmm. okay. yeah what was the average cost of going to both dances, would you say? Not a lot. <laughs> we didn't, We wore a suit to church every Sunday, so we had a suit. And the girls had their Sunday go-to meeting dress, too. So I don't think we went out and spent much money, if any money, to dress up for the prom. We dressed up all the time. So were there any special events at your school that involved the larger community? Other than sports? Well, we had plays. You know, we did plays, we had concerts, concert band. We had a concert every week in the summertime, downtown in the band shell. And I don't know how many concerts we had during the course of the year, three or four maybe. Of course, the marching band marched at every football game. We, we marched at every cemetery uh, on Memorial Day in full uniform, wool pants, coats. Was your school ever used for any community events, like the building itself? Yes, we had a... Uh, friend of mine who's a year behind me in school and he was one of my good friends and uh, he's probably the best high school athlete football player he was a straight-a student he was going to be a doctor he was unbelievably mature for his age he was shaving in seventh grade had a full beard if i showed you a picture of him when he was an eighth and ninth grader you'd think he's 25. he was six foot one he weighed 100 and 95 pounds. He was raw cheekbone, dark beard. He made all state as a freshman and sophomore in football. And during the summer of his sophomore year, he hit a train and was killed, him and another kid. So the funeral was in the school and there were a thousand people there. We used to have people come like Al Bell. Al Bell traveled around the world, various countries, and he would come with items that he brought back from that country. And video or photos more or less uh, slides on a screen and tell the story do you remember any major local national or world events that occurred during your school years yes i do big time civil defense when you go into hampton when you come in from the south on highway 65 the big building on your left first <laughs> building you know how big that is that's probably a couple hundred feet wide and four or five hundred feet long you know what that's a civil defense building you know what was in there? What? Food, bedding, bandages, medical supplies, might have been guns, ammunition. I'm not sure. I never was in it back in those days, but you know what that was for? What? When the hydrogen bomb, when the Russians mm -hmm. dropped the hydrogen bomb, mm -hmm. and we had war. We had fallout shelters, and that's so when the bombs were dropped, you went in your fallout shelter and tried to survive. The event that happened that we might have used those shelters. Okay. So I remember I was in physics class in my junior or senior year, and must have been my senior year because I think John F. Kennedy was the president. I know he was. The Russians were moving missiles to Cuba, and they were setting them up in Cuba so they could shoot us. And Kennedy decided he was going to put a stop to it. So mm -hmm. these ships that were headed from Russia to Cuba, our Navy went out and stopped them and the alarms went off at that point and uh, i guess everybody felt there was a high probability that we were going to get in nuclear war that was a pretty major event but yeah fallout shelters and nuclear war and it was on the tvs and everywhere civil defense we don't hear much about that anymore or see too much about that but it was pretty scary back in those days. So when you finished school, I know you mentioned that you went to become a veterinarian and then went to um, into dairy. Um, was there anything else that you did at all that maybe you hadn't mentioned? After high school? Yeah. Got married. When did you get married? 1965, two years after I graduated. 
from high school. That's how come I'm looking at 57 years. How did you meet? In school. She went to the Sunnyside Country School through seventh grade. And then after Sunnyside closed, she came to Ackley. What are some important takeaways that you want people to remember from your um, school experience? I guess number one, I wish the educational system in this country was still what it was back in the 60s and 70s, that we were still considered to be number one in the world in education and uh, not only in school, but in the church also. Is there anything else that you wanted to talk about, about your experiences that we maybe didn't get to yet? Don't think so. Thank you so much yeah. for agreeing to meet with me.